So Alex, what in this room depends on fossil fuels that might surprise people? I guess what would surprise people is that nothing, you, you couldn't find something that doesn't depend on fossil fuels. So why don't you try? Okay, um, how about this rug? Well, so the rug is almost certainly made of fossil fuels. So, so one of, actually one of the things that, like I'm obsessed with energy now, mm -hmm. but the thing actually that got me into oil was the realization that oil is the physical basis of basically everything in the world that it's not obvious where it came from. So if you look at something and it's not a rock, right? If it's not a rock <laughs> and it's not a plant, uh -huh. something like that, you know, it's not um, not a metal, mm -hmm. it's like probably based on oil or natural gas. So for instance, you know, a carpet, the insulation, the coating on the wood, the ink on my book, uh, you know, the coating on this, like any kind of coating. Ink on your book comes from fossil fuels? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, this is news to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it's it's really, because the thing is, we live in, a, you just think about what the materials were like in the world uh, 200 years ago, mm -hmm. and then think of how different they are. Like, there are many things that would appear to somebody 200 years ago, if, if they traveled in time, that would be very different. Of course, the level of wealth, the level of capability, mm -hmm. but even just the material composition of the world is so different because you had a very limited range of materials. And now we have all these materials that just, to us, they seem like distinct materials, but they're almost all based on hydrocarbon chemistry. So these mm -hmm. molecules of hydrogen, hydrogen atoms and carbon atoms in these different chains, mm -hmm. like, and depending on the length and the composition of the chains, they have, they're, they're totally different. So the way I think of it is, you know, when we see an oil spill, you know, that's when we see oil physically. That's when most people see oil yeah. physically. But it's like that stuff, they figured out how to turn that into a sleep number bed. <laughs> and so it's really, or, you know, one statistic, you know, one thing to think about is like, you have a huge amount of oil in your car, not in the gas tank, but just in, in everything. So any kind of plastic, any synthetic, like the whole world is made of these, these things. And so that's one kind of perspective to take. Like I used to, when I started off on this, I would take what I call an oil walk. So I just look around the world and I'd see what is made of oil. Mm -hmm. And you start to learn, it's, it's like, it's all oil. So that's one pass at the world is, is thinking about what's its material composition. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing is to ask, what is its productive origin? Because you have to look at the world and you have to realize the level of abundance and capability we have today is totally unnatural. It'd be unrecognizable, you know, in many ways, even to kings of the past, but certainly to the typical person of the past. And so we should always be asking, where did all of this, sort of where does all of this come from? Why does it exist in so much abundance? Particularly because there are 8 billion of us now. You know, there used to be well under 1 billion of us just a few mm -hmm. hundred years ago. So, but we have more abundance per person. So there should be this, this fascination with why is the world so abundant? And there, there's not, which is, is revealing of the level of our intellectuals today, that there's not that fascination with why are we so abundant? Also, why does it progress? Because both of those are unnatural. Like usually it's scarcity and stagnation. That's the rule throughout history. And, and so if you think about what causes the abundance, I think the most direct thing that I talk about in my work is we got machines to do productive work for us. When our physical bodies are doing productive work, we are very, very limited in how much value we produce because we're limited by our time and we're limited by our energy. But if we can delegate productive work to machines, then we have unlimited potential time because we can multiply the machines and we have unlimited potential energy. And so, but that only, but the thing is t creating machines and the fuel that powers the machines, that takes human time as well. And so the game of being productive is how can you create as much, as many machines and the power for the machines in as little human time as possible. That's why fossil fuels are so valuable. It's really, that's the way most people have, most people use to use the minimum amount of time to create the maximum amount of what I call machine labor, machines doing work for us. And we can see in the world today, when you increase that price of energy, that means more time to create machine labor and that means you basically run out of time and people can stop affording things. So people can stop affording fertilizer. They can stop affording the same level of home. They can stop affording to run a factory. And so I think of it as, yeah, fossil fuels are responsible for producing all of this around us. And it's because they're so cost effective. And when the cost of energy goes up, the cost that means more time to produce things, which means the cost of everything goes up and you can ultimately afford less with your finite time. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching that video. 
To see the full episode, check out the box over here or the link in the description.